Now we know that the name node updates all the file system transactions to the disk as a backup for the file system state that is stored in the RAM. It does this by updating the edit logs. Now this brings us to an interesting event in the name node which we call as checkpoint. Now over time the edit logs can become really large. This can result in long delays in name node restart. This is because the edit logs cannot be directly used to load the file system state. The edit files just store the event logs for all the file system transactions. This has to be first applied to the FS image which stores the actual file system state which can then be loaded to the RAM. Hence it is important that the name node periodically updates the FS image so that there are less edit logs that needs to be applied during a name node restart. This process of updating FS image to store the up to date file system state is called as checkpoint. Now there are actually two ways of performing the checkpoint operation. The first one is by simply saving the in-memory file system state which is always up to date directly onto the disk as a new FS image file. You can actually perform this manually by executing the save namespace Hadoop command. Once you execute the command, the system writes the in-memory namespace to the disk to a new file and saves it as a newer version of the FS image. It will close all the edit files until that point and mark them as checked, which means the transactions up to that point have been applied to the FS image and can be disregarded. It does this by updating the FS image version and the scene TXID. The HDFS then starts writing all the newer transactions to a fresh edit file. Now the biggest drawback with this technique is that until the time the name node completes writing the namespace to the disk from its RAM, it cannot entertain any newer file system events and will be in a mode which we call as safe mode. This means that the HDFS would be in a read-only mode and will not allow any changes to the file system so that the checkpoint process is not interrupted. Again, since the checkpoint has to happen periodically, this repeated service interruption becomes a huge inconvenience to clients on a production cluster. Now this brings us to the next method which is the edit logs replay. Now instead of writing the file system state directly from the RAM, the name node here performs a edit logs replay from the last checkpoint. Now since all the file system transactions are logged in the edit files, the name node would periodically perform an edit logs run from the last checkpoint where it reads all these transaction logs and then apply it to the FS image. Now on a single name node setup, an edit log replay can severely affect the server performance. This is because during an edit's replay, the server has to first open the huge FS image file, load it onto its memory, then replay the edits and then save and close it again as a newer version of the FS image file onto the disk. Now this is an extremely memory intensive operation and on big clusters having GBs of namespace data, a checkpoint operation would almost surely eat up all available resources or even bring down the name node itself. Now this is where I would like to introduce a new component to the HDFS framework which is the secondary name node. Now the secondary name node is a purely support service and is like an assistant to the name node which has one and only one job that is to periodically replay edits and perform checkpoint. This helps to outsource the checkpoint process to a separate node or server so that it doesn't affect the active name node. Now that we know what secondary name node is, we should also know what it is not. Well, it is not a backup name node and must not be mistaken as a failover service in case the primary name node is down. We haven't introduced the name node high availability as of now, which we'll cover in the next session. So again, secondary name node is not a backup name node, even though the name can be misleading to some of you. A checkpoint can be triggered in three ways. The first is during a name node restart. Now before the name node loads the FS image to its memory, it has to make sure that it is up to date. It does this by triggering a checkpoint to merge all the edit files from the last checkpoint. Second is automatic. The secondary name node can trigger a checkpoint automatically after a given time interval or after a certain number of transactions. The value for the time interval and the number of transactions can be configured in the HDFS site.xml file under the properties checkpoint.period and checkpoint.transactions. The default value for the time interval is 3600 seconds and for the number of transaction is 100,000. Third is manually. You can also trigger a checkpoint manually by executing a few commands, which I'll show to you guys in the lab demos. Now with the secondary name node in the picture, let's take some time to summarize the new checkpoint procedure. The secondary name node will keep track of the elapsed time and the number of transactions from the last edits row. It will trigger a checkpoint automatically once any one of the preconditions are met. 
Once the primary name node receives a message for an edits role, it will close its current edit segment and start a new one. The primary name node can keep writing to the new edit segment while the checkpoint is in progress. The primary name node also returns the transaction ID of the latest FS image and the edit log segment that was just closed. Using these IDs, the secondary name node would fetch the latest FS image and the required edit segment using HTTP GET protocol. Once the secondary name node receives the FS image and the edit segments, it would replay the edit logs and update the FS image file system state. It will then send another HTTP GET message to inform the primary name node that the edit role is complete. The primary name node will in turn send its own HTTP GET message to receive the new updated version of the FS image from the secondary name node. The secondary name node would then transfer the updated FS image and will receive a confirmation from the primary name node marking successful completion of the checkpoint. Now remember in the beginning I mentioned two important information that the name node is responsible for storing. That is the file system state or the namespace and the block address information. Well, till now we have covered only the namespace part. Just like the namespace, the name node maintains the block address table in its random access memory. However, unlike FS image, the name node does not store a local copy of the block address table on the disk. Now we will learn more about how the name node generates and stores the block address table once I cover the topic of data nodes. So just put a pin on this topic till then and we will cover it with the data nodes. Now in this demo, I'll explain to you guys more about checkpoint and the role of secondary name node. For now, I have only launched the name node and the data node on the server. I haven't yet launched the secondary name node which I'll launch later. I will start this demo by talking a little bit about the transaction IDs. Now, uh, as I already explained in the previous demo, the number at the end of each of these edits and FS image is what we call as the transaction ID. Uh, as you can see, currently it is on the 6th, 699th transaction. Well, uh, the FS image also has a transaction ID uh, on its name. Well, this is extremely important because this signifies uh, the number of transactions that has been updated to this FS image. Now, there are two FS image and the recent one or the most updated one is this one because it has the most uh, updated transaction. This has 697, this has 698. The scene uh, TXID actually uh, tells the most recent or ongoing transaction. If you do a cat, it shows as 699, which means the this FS image is only missing one transaction. So it is, uh, it has been updated till the 698 transaction and current transaction is 699. So only one transaction is missing. Well, these two, uh, the FS image transaction ID and the scene TX ID are extremely important because this helps the name node to decide uh, until which edit segment the uh, checkpoint has already been completed so that it can disregard it for the current checkpoint. Next, I want to talk about the edits replay that happens during a name node startup. You can actually check this uh, using the name node web UI. Now this is the web UI I have launched for our name node and here you can see there is a tab called startup progress. If you click on that, you can see that the different, the first phase of the name node is where the, it actually replays the edits and updates the FS image. Now remember I told you that before uh, the name node uploads the FS image into its RAM to recreate the file system state during its startup, it has to make sure that the FS image is up to date and hence it will perform a checkpoint uh, during its startup. Well, you can see the first thing it does is loads the FS image. As you can see, the FS image it has loaded has the transaction ID 697. Then it will check the scene uh, TX ID to confirm whether it is missing any transaction and if it is missing, it will load the edits uh, which contains those transactions. So it has loaded the 698 uh, edit, uh, edit log segment and then it will perform a checkpoint and update the FS image and write it back to the disk. Uh, also recreate uh, its uh, file system state in the RAM. Now I'll talk about the block report in the uh, later when we complete the data nodes. Next I want to show you guys how to perform a manual checkpoint. 
first without using the secondary name node and then using the secondary name node. Now remember we haven't started the secondary name node yet which you can confirm using the JDS. Uh, here you can see we just have the name node and the data node. There is no secondary name node. Uh, also, remember the transaction ID of the FS image, uh, the latest FS image, which is 700. So after we perform the checkpoint, this should be updated. Now, in order to do the manual checkpoint without the secondary name node, I'll be using the save namespace command. What it will do is it will basically write the namespace directly from the RAM onto the disk and save it as a newer version of the FS image. However, before I can do that, I should put the HDFS into the safe mode, which is basically a read only mode uh, so that no further file system transaction is allowed until the namespace is being written uh, onto the disk from the memory. So I will, I can put the HDFS into safe mode by using this command. And you can see the safe mode is on now. So the HDFS is uh, in a read only state right now. And now I'll execute the save namespace command, which will basically perform a checkpoint or update the FS image. Now this process doesn't use the uh, edit files uh, and it will directly write uh, the updated namespace from the memory onto the disk. And you can see save namespace is successful. Now I can leave the safe mode by using the HDFS safe mode leave. Now as you can see to perform uh, the save namespace, I, there is a, a service interruption on the name node and hence this is not an efficient way to do the checkpoint. However, our checkpoint is successful and we can check that using the LS. As you can see the FS image has been updated to the uh, to 702 earlier it was 700 now we have a new fs image with 702 and also the previous log segment has been closed uh, which you can see here and this is the current log segment uh, being used which is 703 edit log segment now let us perform the checkpoint using the secondary name node you can do this using this command hdfs secondary name node checkpoint force now remember this command won't work on a running secondary name node. We haven't started our secondary name node yet. So what this command will do is it will basically start the secondary name node and immediately perform a checkpoint and then shut it down again. This command is mostly used as a debugging tool to check if the secondary name node is working fine before actually starting it. So let me execute this command. Uh, it will take some time to execute because it will start up the secondary name node and then perform this checkpoint. So I'll pause the recording till then. Okay, now the checkpoint is complete. We can verify this using the ls command to list out the SFS image version. Uh, remember that earlier it was 704. So if this checkpoint is successful, this should have been updated. And yes, it has changed to 706, which means our checkpoint was successful. Uh, this also means that uh, our secondary name node is working fine, so we can go ahead and start up our secondary name node. Now you can start the secondary name node using the uh, start script, uh, which is basically the daemon.sh start secondary name node. Okay, now our secondary name node is starting up. Now remember that since this is a single node Hadoop system used only for lab purpose, we are running the secondary name node on the same server as the primary name node. However, for all production purposes, the secondary name node must always run on a separate server or node since the checkpoint process on large production clusters can severely affect the name node performance if it happens on the same server. Now I have already explained you the role of secondary name node, which is to perform checkpoint periodically after checking the preconditions. The preconditions being the time elapsed and the number of transactions from the last checkpoint. I also showed you the uh, configuration parameters or the properties uh, that decide these the, the, the values for these parameters in the HDFS site.xml. The default for time elapsed is one hour and the default for number of transaction is one million transactions. 
I have configured the uh, time elapsed to five minutes on my server and you can check that using the uh, by opening the hdfs site.xml file user local hadoop and then you go to hdfs site.xml right so you can see here that i have configured the dfs name node checkpoint dot period uh, property to 300 seconds which is basically five minutes if i don't uh, mention this property by default it will take as one hour uh, I have verified that the checkpoint does happen every five minutes. The another property that I wanted to show you guys is this one, the dfs.namenode.checkpoint.dir. This property basically uh, mentions the directory path which the secondary name node uses to copy the file. So if I go to this directory, uh, do an ls you can see a current again going to current and if I do an ls you can see that it also contains all the edits and the fs image files basically what the secondary name node does is it copies these files from the primary name node into this directory and then performs the merging or the edits log row. It is possible that during the checkpoint process, your secondary name node can eat up all your available network bandwidth to transfer the FS image file. This is especially true for large production clusters where the size of FS image can be really big. In such situations, you can use the property in HDFS site.xml uh, which is the DFS image transfer bandwidth per second. This basically sets a throttling of b uh, bandwidth or an upper limit for the maximum bandwidth that can be used by the secondary name node to transfer the image file. By default, it is zero, uh, which means the throttling is disabled. The values can be set in bytes per second. You should also correctly configure the timeout property, uh, which by default is 60,000 milliseconds. Uh, this is basically time in milliseconds for which the secondary name node will wait for successful transfer of the image file before throwing a timeout error. This is used to prevent the secondary name node from hanging in case the primary name node fails during image transfer. Now, one last thing, you can also set the property to uh, specify the number of FS image that should be retained. The property is uh, checkpoints retained. So this is the property dfs.namenode.num checkpoints retained. By default, it is two. So the name node will retain two FS image, the current one and the uh, one before that. Uh, all the FS image older than that will be deleted. Now remember in the beginning I mentioned two important information that the name node is responsible for storing. That is the file system state or the namespace and the block address information. Well till now we have covered only the namespace part. Just like the namespace the name node maintains the block address table in its random access memory. However unlike FS image the name node does not store a local copy of the block address table on the disk. Now we will learn more about how the name node generates and stores the block address table once I cover the topic of data nodes. So just put a pin on this topic till then and we will cover it with the data nodes.